basically we were together as a band, as a unit. It's not George and Culture Club, otherwise we'd have called ourselves that. I mean, there's no sort of egotist in this band. I am a spokesman because I like talking. The others just can't be bothered, really. I don't enjoy performing live all the time. I mean, I think a band's as good as an audience, you know. I think if the audience like you, then you'll be good. If they don't, it's just very hard work. I like making contact with the audience. It sounds like a sort of rock and roll story, but I think it's important. I mean, they're what make, you know, those are the people what make you what you are. If you start sort of, you know, I mean, the idea of videos and things like that is, is all very well and good, but I think you've got to get out and play to people and you've got to be a touchable commodity. <laughs> of Culture Club has been very important. I think when we started, it's very good to have an image because you grab attention. And that's, you know, one of the most important things because, you know, you're in a sort of industry where there's like millions of bands that never, ever get any attention. But also, with me, it's a very personal thing. It's not just, let's be a pop star, let's be a Gary Glitter, because I take it a lot further than that. I mean, I don't think I'm, I'm different at all, you know. And I think that's probably one of the sad things about a lot of human beings, that they don't actually meet anyone on any, any other level apart from their own. I'm not actually trying to be David Bowie, and I'm not actually trying to be anyone. I'm just doing it because I enjoy doing it. I dress up for the same reason that an old woman would maybe put on a Lurex dress to go to an evening dinner and dance. It's a personal part of my life. I mean, I'm not sexually insane. What motivates Culture Club and moves you? Roy. <laughs> no, hard work motivates Culture Club and uh, just really the need to be successful and to write good songs. I mean, at the end of the day, if you haven't got a good song, then, you know, you haven't got a good band. There's some old hippies upstairs. God, you're not going on like that, are you? What does Culture Club mean to you, John? What does it mean to me? Fun, excitement, travel, <laughs> meeting interesting people. <laughs> How are you coping with the media's flavour of the month approach to fashion conscious performers? Well, I think, you know, I mean, a lot of journalists now are really stupid anyway, you know, a lot of them are really unintelligent. I mean, the sad thing about, you know, like when, obviously the music industry, when punk rock came along, I think that a lot of those sort of hippie newspapers, they sort of suddenly turned to, to get young people to write for them, they suddenly felt they needed youth. And I think that's one of the things you see about young people, a lot of them don't really appreciate things. A lot of them have got very sort of cocksure ideas about what they're doing. I think a lot of them think they're Ernest Hemingway, you know, and I think it's a bit boring. But I don't personally feel that Culture Club is flavour of the month because I think that we've uh, overcome that now. I think our audience is a lot bigger than they actually assume. It's been always the sort of intent of this band from the beginning that people could actually see me on the same level as they see themselves, you know. And I'm not saying to them, hey, you know, join this fairy story. I'm just saying, get on with it and enjoy yourself. It's waggling my head so much. I've got to do it again. <laughs> it lasts as long as you don't take it seriously. I mean, it's, if you've got a lot of people saying, oh, you're wonderful and you're fantastic, if you start sort of letting that get to you, then, you know, you might as well give up. And the most important thing is that you can turn around to yourself and say, right, I'm successful. Not, you know, I'm not selling millions of records, but I'm a successful person, I'm happy. Oh. 